it's very difficult to be a tyrant over an armed populace. And that's the reason that enshrined in our Constitution, the second most important right is the right to keep and bear arms. Apparently, it's one that Doug Jones doesn't believe is a right because he wants this gigantic laundry list of restrictions on it. Is there any other right that Doug Jones thinks that there should be all these different laws restricting who is allowed to have the right and who isn't? Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That Doug Jones responded to a number of questions on a questionnaire that was sent to him by our own hometown paper, the Montgomery Advertisers. Pretty straightforward question by the Montgomery Advertiser, to their credit. They ask, do Americans have a right to own a gun? Jones responds, yes, the right to bear arms is enshrined in our Constitution in the Second Amendment. But just as Justice Scalia observed in the Heller decision, which recognized the right to bear arms under the Second Amendment, like all other constitutional rights, it has limitations based on public safety. Many of those limitations have been law for about 50 years. I am a proud gun owner, hunter, and sportsman. While there are certain common sense steps we can take to keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people who would inflict violence in our communities, I fully support the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding Americans. I wouldn't, want to, I wouldn't want someone to vote against my right to bear arms and take my guns away. I have also worked hard in the Senate to keep our hunting traditions alive, especially as it relates to stopping the spread of chronic wasting disease, which threatens our country's deer population. I've passed bipartisan legislation to help get more resources to hunters and wildlife management agencies and to expand research needed to stop the spread of this disease. Yeah, here's the thing. If you are so absolutely convinced that the Second Amendment is an absolute right, then why is it the very first thing that you did as a senator, your, your maiden voyage of a speech from the well of the Senate was basically all of the restrictions that you want to put on guns. When he talks about these common sense measures, you can actually, you, you don't have to guess at it. You don't have to, you know, make some kind of assumption. You can just watch and he lays out the kinds of things that he is in favor of in the very first thing that he did as a senator in the United States Senate. You can watch that now. We also need to get past the idea that more guns in society will make us all safer. The statistics and the data simply do not support that. We don't need guns in the hands of school teachers. Simply having more good guys with guns is not the solution. Americans just simply do not want to return to the days of the Wild West. But frankly, we have to do more on background checks. We have to require background checks on all gun sales, whether it is at a gun show or over the internet or between individuals. We should close the so-called Charleston loophole, as proposed by Senator Blumenthal. This loophole allows a purchaser to receive a firearm after three days, regardless of whether their background check had been completed or not. We can create certain exceptions for concealed carry permits and holders and others, but no one should be allowed to take possession of a firearm until they have cleared a background check. Current law prohibits a firearms dealer from selling a pistol to anyone under the age of 21. That has been the law for many years without any real challenge. The same logic behind this prohibition should apply to the sales of pistols and semi-automatic weapons to those under the age of 21. We can do more to stop mental health issues from turning dangerous by allowing enforcement or family members to seek a court order when an individual poses an extreme danger to themselves or others, or prevent them from getting access to firearms. If Senator Jones really believes that the right to keep and bear arms is an absolute right, do teachers just not have rights? If you're a school teacher, you just, that one just kind of goes away for you. 
Are, are there any other rights that teachers don't have? Do they not have the right to be, for example, secure in their papers? Uh, can their house just be searched at random because they're high school teachers? Uh, do they have a right to religion or free speech or any of that? Do you think that one should be taken away? See, if it's such an absolute right, if you believe that it is an inalienable right, which our founders believed, why is it that's a right you just have to give up? If you're a school teacher, that one I do not understand. And another thing, when he talks about raising the age for purchasing a rifle to 21, uh, is it just not a right for 18 to 21 year olds? So if you're 18, 19, or 20, you just don't get that right. I mean, you can vote and you can do everything else. You can serve in the army, which uh, last time I checked still uses guns. I don't know. Uh, may maybe they've moved to fishing pikes or something, you know, back like in the Revolutionary War. I'm pretty sure they're allowed to use guns. Why is it that a 18, 19, 20-year-old can't? What if what you're talking about in the last question about somebody that had a baby out of wedlock and is going through immense poverty, what if it's a 19-year-old mom that lives in a rough part of the neighborhood and, you know, wants to stave off any would-be robbers or rapists or people that could hurt their children? Just sorry out of luck for her? Is that how it works? Why do they not have the right to protect themselves with a firearm? Or should we raise the voting age? Because if we can't trust a 20 or a 19-year-old to have a firearm, why should we treat them, why should we trust them to vote? I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. We can't trust them with a firearm, but we can trust them with deciding the course of the free world. That's something that we're okay with, with giving them the power to do, but not having a gun. None of this makes any sense. Furthermore, is it okay for a person's rights to be violated if the government can't get their crap together in three days? See, the reason that that law that he's talking about is put into place, the reason that that law is there that says, if we can't complete the background check in three days, then we have to give you the gun regardless. Do you know why that's there? Because the people that wrote that law knew and understood that if there was no limit on it, then all the Democrats would have to do is severely underfund and make the background check system, the NICS, all they would have to do is make that completely dysfunctional and, oh, we're doing your background check. You've never actually had a, a crime or any kind of, of violent thing, nothing more than a speeding ticket your entire life. But yeah, it's going to take us a couple years to finish your background check. See, they knew that Democrats, especially ones that want to disarm the American population, could play games like that. That's why the three-day rule is there. Now, normally that background check takes literally less than five minutes. It usually doesn't even take that long. I've been through a couple of them myself when I purchased firearms, and I can tell you that it's kind of a pain to wait for it, but you're usually only waiting a minute to two minutes, and all it does is, I mean, we freaking have the internet now. It's not 1968. We can plug somebody's name into a computer, and then it comes back to us and tells us, no, they're, they're clean, they can have a gun. And by the way, I'm in favor of laws that keep felons and violent offenders from having guns. And I'm also in favor of measures that have been taken right here in the state of Alabama to help us get better at that background check system to make sure that there is good information in it, which unfortunately there hasn't always been. I don't want violent people to have firearms. That's a thing that I am vehemently against. But the reason that rule is there is so Democrats like Doug Jones can't play games with this thing and say, well, yeah, we're, we're just, it's going to take us a few months to get your background check done. There was a very anti-gun sheriff, for example, in Lee County. I'm pretty sure he's not the sheriff there anymore. But back in Lee County, I remember because this was back when I was going to Auburn, there was a sheriff that he extended the background check for getting a concealed uh, carry permit. He extended it to 30 days. Now, he could have done the background check in five days, but he extended it to 30 days for no reason other than he was not a pro-gun kind of guy. And I remember him actually bragging about this in a meeting that I was covering back when I was working for the Opelika Observer. I was in attendance, and he was just bragging about this, and there was a reporter that beat me to the punch 
that was asking, so has there been any sign that this has helped prevent any crimes, helped save any lives? And he had to admit, well, no. So he was bragging about this policy. He's like, yeah, we, we made it one of the longest ones in Alabama that it's taking, we could do it in just like two minutes, but we expanded the background check process to 30 days. Now, there's no evidence that it's actually saved anybody. There's no evidence that it's actually brought crime down or anything like that, but we expanded it just, you know, for the heck of it. And so politicians, because they have an agenda, will cripple the NIC system, hoping that it keeps people from getting guns if that rule is not in place. And so that's the reason that that is there. Furthermore, if you do believe that it's a right, is there any other right that you have to beg permission for and then wait three days to get it? Like, I don't have to, when it comes to this show, for example, since we're talking about, say, free speech, I don't have to record the show and then send it to the government and get approval for the show. And then after three days of waiting after that decision, then I get to put it up on YouTube and Facebook and all the other venues that I'm at. That's not a thing that has to happen because we have free speech in this country. I can go on live, not this show, but <laughs> other shows when my computer is actually working. I can go on live and just say whatever I want right then and there. I have the right to do that. I have the right to air it on News Radio 1440. I have the right to just walk out into the street and say whatever I want. If you believe it's an inherent right, that there is a natural, inborn, God given right, you don't believe that there are all these long, laundry list of restrictions on all of these things. And that's what Doug Jones is suggesting here for the right to keep and bear arms. And what other right is subject to just having it snatched away at the slightest sign of bad behavior? As I just said, I'm very much in favor of violent offenders, violent felons, that kind of thing, not having guns. They shouldn't have them. I'm okay with the background check system. I'm okay with those people being denied having guns, but to my knowledge, there's not another one that can just be snatched away by due process. What he was talking about there where somebody can just, in your family, suspect that you might hurt yourself with a gun, and they could go to the authorities and have your guns taken away, and then we'll evaluate and see if they can get your guns back to you. Uh, no, that's not how it works. It's not as though one of my family members, let's say that I've got a liberal family member, which by the way, I do, and they don't agree with what I'm saying when it comes to the First Amendment. Does that mean that the government can just shut me down and take a few days to investigate, and then after they've looked into it, they can decide whether or not it's okay for me to have my free speech back? That's not the way that rights work. Let's say that you were a person that was completely peaceful, never hurt anybody, never had any intention of hurting yourself or anybody else, no signs, signs of suicide or anything like that. But you just happen to have a family member that's really liberal and doesn't like the fact that you've got a bunch of guns and then just out of spite because you took them off one day, they could report you and say, I think he's going to hurt himself. I think he might become a mass shooter. Well, then the police could go in under Doug Jones rules and just take your guns away from you without due process. And then the due process happens after they've taken your right away from you to see if they will, by their own good graces, give your rights back to you. That's not how this works. If it's an inalienable God-given right, you don't have the right to take it away from me unless you have a really, really good reason and can prove that I have done something wrong. That's the way that it is supposed to work. And when he says universal background checks, when he says universal background checks, that is just a proxy for creating a national register. It always has been because a universal background check system won't work unless you know where all the guns are to begin with. So if you were to track anything, for example, if you were to track, you know, Nintendo Switches, the only way you could tell whether or not somebody had sold their Nintendo Switch to somebody else is if you knew where all the Switches were to begin with. If you take the emotional uh, hesitancy to talk about this when it comes to the left, when it comes to guns, if you make it literally anything else, it makes sense. Oh yeah, you'd, you'd have to have some kind of register of where all of those things are in order to trace them to see if somebody had sold them to somebody else or not. But the National Registry completely negates the purpose of the Second Amendment. The whole reason that we have a Second Amendment is to use it against the government. Remember that when the Nazis came in, one of the first things they did 
was register guns. And why did they register guns? So that when it came time to disarm the population and take over the country, they knew where all the guns were. You don't want to jump into a Jew's house when he might have a shotgun waiting for you. So they registered the guns, and then after some time, they went and took all the guns from the people that were not trustworthy, like the Jews, and then it was really easy to just shove them into a car and ship them off to Auschwitz. Yes, that's a horrible and extreme example, but that's how this happens. It doesn't happen with the snap of a finger. They don't tell you up front that that is the end goal, and many of them it's probably not. They probably never have any intention of taking it that far. But that's where it eventually goes. That's why the Second Amendment is there, so that doesn't happen. It's very difficult to be a tyrant over an armed populace. And that's the reason that enshrined in our Constitution, the second most important right is the right to keep and bear arms. Apparently, it's one that Doug Jones doesn't believe is a right because he wants this gigantic laundry list of restrictions on it. Is there any other right that Doug Jones thinks that there should be all these different laws restricting who is allowed to have the right and who isn't? I mean, it's a simple question, but Doug Jones can pay lip service to the Second Amendment all he wants. He can pretend that he cares deeply about this and, oh, I'm a hunter and I'm a sportsman and I shoot guns and all this stuff. Yeah, well, even if you do, and I'm not saying that you don't, you're obviously not treating the Second Amendment as though it is a God-given natural right, which the Declaration of Independence and then later enshrined in the Second Amendment of the Constitution ensures that all people in the United States of America have. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.